Welcome back to the teaching. We're continuing our study of parental honor. This is now our eighth installment, and uh, we're still talking about the Ten Commandments for Prejects. Uh, we made our way through Commandment uh, 5, and uh, we're going to finish that up and uh, move into camp Commandment number 6 today. But I want to uh, encourage you to uh, check out our website, uh, uh, browse to the uh, page uh, that includes uh, the most recent radio interview that I did uh, yesterday at KTYM uh, as I was on the uh, Gospel uh, jazz connection there yesterday um, and uh, send the link uh, to people that you know who are interested in uh, understanding more about parental rejection about prejection because as I shared uh, on the program yesterday uh, this is not something that anyone else is talking about but it affects uh, at least half of the American population uh, and we're talking about uh, something that afflicts uh, people worldwide uh, there are uh, potentially one billion projects uh, on the globe on the planet today and so uh, we're really uh, bringing a word of uh, revelation and restoration healing uh, to people who are flying below their uh, potential who uh, have been unable to break through that inner glass ceiling we want people to experience breakthrough that's what God desires for us, and that's why he sent Jesus to uh, preach the good news to the poor and to heal the brokenhearted, those who have broken hearts because they've got broken souls. And we want to correct that condition so that you can be all that you were designed to be. Get to your destiny on schedule and uh, walk in health, wealth, wisdom, power, and love. And be fruitful, multiply, fill up the place where you are, subdue it and have dominion. Uh, I was unable to do that for a very long time. God put gifts in me, gave me talents and abilities, but I couldn't utilize those talents, couldn't uh, maximize those talents because I was uh, uh, too busy uh, trying to understand what was going on in my life with my parents. And so I um, couldn't focus, uh, couldn't think straight. Uh, was governed by fear most of my life um, and so it seemed like I was throwing my ability and my talents away uh, and people would often uh, wonder about me why aren't you further along yet why aren't you uh, um, in, a, in, a, in a higher place than you are right now and uh, I couldn't answer the question because I didn't understand it myself until God gave me revelation that what was going on was that I was living with a broken soul. And so all the energy that I needed to be what I was designed to be was seeping out of me. And until I fixed that, I couldn't maximize my life. And that's what uh, we're here trying to help you do, to maximize your life. If you've lived with a broken soul for a long time, uh, you don't even know that your soul is broken. And uh, uh, and and so um, mediocrity seems normal. It's normative. You're not living, uh, most of us, we're not living in a lot of emotional pain because we've gotten accustomed to that pain. And when we finally get healed and uh, are exposed to the joy that comes from living a full life, a life from a whole soul, uh, everything becomes different that's what we want you to experience today father make it happen now in the name of jesus holy spirit convict reveal open eyes in jesus name all right so let's get back to uh, uh, the fourth commandment that we were finishing up yesterday uh or rather the fifth commandment which is to take a faith risk uh, look for and take a faith risk every day uh number five is uh, connected to number six in the Ten Commandments uh, in the Bible, we find that uh, the first four commandments uh, deal with our relationship with God, how we uh, respond to God, how we view God, how we talk to God. And the last six deal with how we uh, treat people, how we handle people who were made in the image and likeness of God. Well, uh, these uh, preject commandments are structured in a similar fashion in that the first uh, four of them uh, deal with uh, the soul and uh, 
how to get that soul healed and uh, and how to manage uh, a whole soul and then uh, the last six uh, deal with acting out of that whole soul <laughs> and um, so number five yesterday uh, we finished up talking about taking a faith risk every day you've got to have a whole soul to take a faith risk uh, and that means that you've got to live your life uh, with an external focus rather than an internal focus. Many prejects are so internally focused because they're empty on the inside. They're only focused on filling their lives up, getting their needs met. And when you are living, here's the word, consumptively, we've talked about this, uh, uh, you can go back into our archives and check out uh, the segments that we did. We went through several of them on consumptive living prejects live consumptively while they're unhealed when you get healed you no longer have to try to fill your soul up because your soul is whole and God desires to fill you and he fills you once and you don't have to ever be filled again um, so uh, if you're if you're full if you're living from a place of fullness then you're you, you can afford to take risks uh, because people, uh, risk takers are full. Y you risk from a full place, you gamble from an empty place. And I'm not talking about taking a faith gamble, I'm talking about taking a faith risk. When you're gambling, if you lose what you venture, you're broke, you've got nothing left. If you risk and lose what you venture, you haven't lost much because you can still be because you still have everything uh, does that make sense to you it makes sense to me if you risk and lose what you venture in the risk you don't lose everything because you're risking overflow because you're like you you're living on overflow and so what you're risking you know it's going to be replenished and so it's a risk it's not a gamble uh, taking a faith risk means that I am living from a place of overflow. I've got all my needs met. And so I'm, uh, I can take a risk knowing that if I fall, if I falter, God's got my back. He's going to pick me up. He's not going to let me sink. We talked about that yesterday. All right. Well, um, here's number six, the sixth commandment. Uh, it's, uh, it requires the same kind of living where we're living focused outward rather than inward. I'm not trying to get my needs met. My needs are met already. I'm now looking to meet somebody else's need. Here we go. Uh, the sixth uh, commandment is sow a seed daily. Look for uh, opportunities to sow seeds, to sow into somebody else's life, to pour into someone else's life knowing that everything you sow is an, is an investment which is going to produce a harvest at some point uh, and and we do the sowing not just for the harvest we do the sowing because that's who we are a sower goes forth to sow uh, because he wants a harvest yes but uh, even more fundamentally because he's a sower and he doesn't know what else to do but so that's it's it's in his DNA it defines him so he sows because that's what he does and that's what we need to become uh, God created us in his image and his likeness and God is the ultimate the primordial the first sower God is a sower and everything he does he 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 does by sowing he sows his word uh, that's why the scripture calls God a husbandman the word husbandman means simply a farmer. God's a farmer, and farmers sow so that they can reap. And they sow because that's what they do. They're farmers. God is a farmer. You're a farmer. You're a. What kind of farmer are you going to be? A word farmer? Uh, a money farmer? Are you going to be a love farmer? What are you going to farm? What are you going to sow? Live your life sowing spend uh find something to sow today that's uh commandment number six for the project that's how we reorder our lives living from a whole soul 
Father, thank you for this revelation. Help us to begin to walk it out in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, do three things for me. Send this to somebody you know who needs it. And then if you're on our, if you're on our uh, website, go to our YouTube link. Uh, go to the YouTube page uh, and subscribe to our videos. Go to the bottom of the page and leave a channel comment so others can be blessed by how God is ministering to you through these, uh, through these messages. All right. I'm excited to be with you again tomorrow. My name is Earl Middleton. I'm your host, and I'm reminding you to live forcefully. Demonstrate the kingdom from a whole soul. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.